This video is brought to you by Sync, voice-activated in-car technology available exclusively on Ford, Lincoln, and Mercury vehicles. Sync, powered by Microsoft. I'm Matt McLaren from Microsoft Research, and I'm gonna show you Kodu, which is our uh, new game creation tool coming out of Microsoft Research, and it's gonna ship on the um, Xbox uh, Live Community Games channel in the spring. So I'm gonna give you a little gentle introduction to the art of programming in Kodu. So I'm gonna open up um, what we call a, a starter world here, and uh, Code is going to ship with about 20 sample games, so you can just you know get in and start playing if you're not ready to start programming. Um, and then also these sample worlds, which are worlds that you know we try to make look pretty cool, but um, don't have any characters or any action in them yet. So this little donut that you see here is uh, is my cursor moving around the world. You can go underwater and check that out. Um, I can spin around the cursor. I can zoom in and out and and what have you. Um, so um, was, I start with a simple blocky world just because it's easy to see what's going on. When you go into edit mode, it lights up so you can see everything really clearly. And let me show you the tool palette and see what that looks like. So the tool palette, what we've got is starting on the left is the play button. This is just, I want to see, you know, what my game, um, how it works right now. And so let's just go in and run it. The second one is for objects. And this is really kind of the heart of Kodu. It's um, where you put characters into the world. And it's also the tool that you use to give those characters new behaviors uh, using programming. And there's stuff for making hills, for um, adding freeform terrain of any shape or size you like, adding oceans and things like that. So let's get right into it. I'm just going to make sort of a little mini shoot 'em up so you can get a flavor for what, what, what we mean by programming in Kodu. Um, so I think I'm going to start with, uh, I'll put a flying saucer over here. So here's our character palette. There's a bunch of different characters, and they all vary um, based on their physical characteristics. Some of them can fly, some of them can walk, um, some of them can swim and go underwater, and some of them can't move at all. Um, so um, I'm going to put in the flying saucer, which moves really quickly, and I'm going to drop it down to the ground, just so we can see the action here. And um, if I was to run the game now, he would just sit there, because I haven't given him any behaviors. And then I'm going to, um, so I'm just going to give him um, a simple user control behavior. So I'll open up the program editor, and what we see in the program editor is sort of this glass bar that defines a rule. And a rule is basically tells the character how to react to things that are happening in his world. Um, and the rule is divided into two chunks, and the first chunk, which is labeled when, is the thing that he's going to react to. And the second chunk, which is called do, is what he's going to do when that thing occurs. Um, so f I'll give you a little sample program. Um, so I, if I wanted to move towards an apple when he sees it, I click on the when clause, um, and these are all the types of things that he can react to. Things that he sees, things that he sear hears, things that he bumps, etc. Um, and so let's go with C. And now I can expand on it by pressing on the plus, and these are the kinds of things that he can see. He can see different types of objects, and then he can also see different colors. So if we would just wanted him to move towards the first red thing, we could do that. Um, but here I just say, if I wanted him to move um, towards an apple, I'd say, well, if you see an apple, then I'd hop over to the do part, and now I can choose, here's all the different actions that this character uh, has. Um, some of them are more advanced, um, and the basic one, you move is very popular, so we just put that at the top. So I just say, see, Apple, move. Then I can expand on that and tell, say how I want him to move. Um, move towards is a very natural one. If I want him to go over to the Apple, I could also have him move away from it. Um, or I could just have him wander randomly. He doesn't have to do anything with the Apple in particular. So that right there is a complete Kodu program. I'm not going to bother to run it because we want to get into a little more action. But that would make the, the, the saucer just move towards the first Apple that he sees. So now we're going to move a little faster, and I'm going to show you how to do you know, what we you know, consider gameplay. Um, so I'll open the character up again, and this time, instead, we're going to say um, where he's going to listen to the gamepad, and we'll step it up a little bit. When the left stick moves, we want the character to move. Same thing with the right stick on the gamepad. We want the character to shoot, so we can shoot in any direction like Robotron. I'm going to open up the tweak screen on the character, which lets you set all kinds of different detail settings if you really want to customize his behavior. I'm going to turn his missile fire rate all the way up. I'm also going to set his missiles so that they go um, so that they're purple, or white, what the heck. And now let's give him an enemy to battle against. So I'm going to drop a fish into the world, tint the color of the fish, and give him a, just a really simple chase behavior. I'm going to tell him that if he sees a saucer, I want him to move towards it. And also, if he sees the saucer, I want him to shoot at it. And then, of course, there are all kinds of variations in how you can shoot and you know what kind of damage you can do. But I'll just have him shoot red missiles and, and call it a day at that. Um, so now I go ahead and run. And so now I've got a really simple little battle. Um, I shoot way more missiles than the, than the saucer does. He's got one last red one. They're chasing me, but it'll go away after a while. And so that wasn't quite enough challenge for me. So now I'm going to make this, this cloud drop more fish out of the sky. 
So I do that by setting what's called creatable on the fish. And that makes him um, sort of more of an abstract character. And so we're going to tell the cloud, every two seconds, we want you to create one of those fish. And so that cloud will just sit up there creating fish and dropping them down at me. And that makes a much you know, more complex and kind of exciting battle scene. So now you can see the fish just kind of keep coming after me. And we try to put a lot of detail into the smoke clouds and distortion and stuff like that to make it cool. So that's your basic introduction to programming in Kodo. You can go much further with it. We have breakout games and racing games. You can do first-person shooters if you like. And it's coming in spring on uh, the Xbox Live Community Games channel.